So we'll start with an individual firm. And here we have the firm's cost functions. And we would like to derive the short run supply curve for this firm and plot the cost functions on the graph. So notice that I've given you total fixed cost and total variable cost separately. One of the reasons for this is because we wanna separate out the part of our fixed cost that is sunk and not sunk. And that will help us determine when the firm shuts down in the short run. Remember that the firm will shut down in the short run when the price is less than our average variable cost. However, it is possible to have some fixed cost that is just associated with operation. So imagine that um, your sunk fixed cost is something like your rent. You have to pay it no matter whether or not you open your doors to customers. But your variable cost, which reflects your operating cost, may also have a portion that is fixed. In other words, it doesn't depend on the quantity. You see that $50 there is fixed. It doesn't depend on the quantity. But you're only going to incur that cost if you choose to operate. So maybe it's something like turning on the lights, right? Like paying your electricity bill. You're only going to do that if you're opening your doors to customers, turning on the lights, but it doesn't depend on the number of sales you make. So this is your non-sunk fixed cost. In other words, you can choose whether or not to pay it by whether or not you're producing some positive quantity. It's not a sunk cost, but it is fixed in the sense that it does not depend on the quantity you produce. Okay, so total cost would just be the sum of our fixed cost and our variable cost. So when we're thinking about writing out our total cost function, in this case, it will be 40Q plus 2Q squared plus, I've got 50 plus 150. The first thing we want to do is to derive this firm's short run supply curve. So let's just start with our profit maximization function. How does this firm choose which quantity to produce? And I want to set it up this way because this is really going to help us as we move to different types of market structure where um, we don't have a constant marginal revenue. All right, so we've got our profit function, we want to maximize profit, that's total revenue, price times quantity, minus total cost, which is 40Q plus 2Q squared plus 200. And uh, to maximize profit, we're going to take the derivative with respect to quantity and set that equal to zero. So we get price minus 40 plus 4Q, and we'll set that equal to zero. So at the end of the day, you've got price is equal to 40 plus 4Q. And you'll notice that when you take the derivative of this total cost function with respect to quantity, what we've written out here is our marginal cost function. So this is price equal to marginal cost. But we always want to think about that in the context of profit maximization. The unique thing about perfect competition is that this price is not a function of the quantity that the firm produces. It is just a constant. And so when we take the derivative of total revenue with respect to quantity, we just get Price. In other words, marginal revenue is equal to the price and it is constant in perfect competition. So again, we'll, we'll change that assumption later as we get into different market structures. So this is the firm's supply curve, right? It's relationship between the price and the quantity that the firm will produce to maximize profits. It's written as inverse supply 
Remember when we talked about demand, we talked about how the P equals some function of Q is the inverse demand function. This is the inverse supply function. Uh, if we wanna write the firm's supply curve, we would write Q equals, and we can rearrange this to be, it's gonna be P over four minus 10. So this is the individual firm supply curve, Q quantity supplied as a function of price. Okay, so uh, let's now think about how we would graph marginal cost um, and supply here. So if we wanted to just calculate marginal cost, we would take the derivative of, of total cost with respect to quantity, which we've done already. We know that's 40 plus 4Q. And so we can put that on our graph here. This should really be a dollar sign. Um, and plot our marginal cost curve. So let's, let's get some quantities going here to give us some numbers for our graph. We'll do zero, two, five, 10, and uh, 25. And uh, I'm doing the two again because uh, for our average total cost and our average variable cost curves, uh, zero will be undefined. So I've got that in there. So I've got five, 10, 15, 20, 25. And then when I plug that into my marginal cost curve, I'm gonna see I get 40 plus four Q. So at zero, it's gonna be 40 to be 48. Five will be 60, 10 will be 80, and 25 will be 140. So my y-axis here, I'm gonna go from zero to 140 here. So let me say, okay, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140. Okay, so now plotting my marginal cost curve, you can see it's a straight line, right? It's just a linear function. I start at 40 and then let's just go to five at 60, 10 at 80, 25 at 140 and marginal cost. Okay, it's gonna be a line like that. Okay, now if I wanna define the firm's supply curve, really I need to think about average variable cost as well, right? Because we said that the individual firm's supply curve is equal to the marginal cost curve above average variable cost. So let's think about what average variable cost looks like. So average variable cost is equal to my variable cost divided by my quantity. So I can now uh, take this variable cost function that I have and divide by Q. So I get 40 plus 2Q plus 50 divided by Q. And one of the important things to think about here is where my average variable cost and marginal cost curves intersect. And you might remember that the average function and the marginal function intersect at the minimum of the average function. So here we are going to find the minimum of our average variable cost curve. And the way that we can do that is to take the derivative of average variable cost with respect to quantity and then set it equal to zero, right? Find the point where the slope is equal to zero. You could set your average variable cost curve equal to your marginal cost curve and find for the, 
solve for the intersection, but this is the math here is going to be much easier if we just take the derivative. So the derivative of my average variable cost curve, okay, derivative of average variable cost set equal to zero. So I get um, two plus negative 50 over Q squared. I'm going to set that equal to zero and then solve for Q and I'm going to end up getting Q squared is equal to 25. So this Q is equal to five. So I know here at this point, that's my minimum of my average variable cost curve. So let's go ahead and, and plug these numbers into our average variable cost function to figure out the value of average variable cost for a graph. So if I plug in two to this equation, I get 40 plus four, that's 44, plus 25 gives me um, 69. At five, I would get 40 plus 10 plus 10, which would be 60, right? And I see that's this point here where they intersect. Uh, if I plug in 10, I get 40 plus 20 plus 5, that's 65. And then plugging in 25 to my average variable cost is going to give me 92. So something like this will be my average variable cost curve. All right, now let's find average total cost. Average total cost is total cost divided by quantity. So we have something really similar to what we did for average variable cost. So using our total cost function and divide by Q, I get 40 plus 2Q plus 200 over Q. And then again, we're going to try to find the intersection of average total cost with marginal cost by taking the derivative and setting it equal to zero. So our minimum of average total cost function is going to be two minus 200 over Q squared equals zero. So I get Q squared equals 100. So Q will equal 10. All right, so I know that my marginal cost function is equal to my average total cost function at a quantity of 10, where these were equal at a quantity of five. And you can see if you go ahead and plug quantity of 10 into your average total cost equation, that's going to give you 80, which is the same point along your marginal cost function. Let's go ahead and plug some other numbers into our average total cost equation so that we can plot it. If I plug in 2, I'm going to get 40 plus 4 plus 100. So that's 144. So somewhere up here, then I plug in five and I will get 90 and plugging in 25, I will get 98. Five, I get 90, somewhere around here. And then 25 is going to be just above this 98. So now if I go to plot my average total cost function. Okay, we've done our best to draw the graph. Um, and you can see here, the important points are the minimum of your average variable cost function and the minimum of your average total cost function, because that's where they intersect marginal cost. And now if I want to go back and more carefully define my individual firm's supply curve, it's going to be the 
portion of the marginal cost function that is higher than average variable cost. So above this minimum average variable cost point. So if you wanna write out the individual firm supply curve, really we probably should write this out as QI equals zero if the price is less than less than 60, because that's the minimum of the average variable cost equation, and uh, P over four minus 10 if the price is greater than 60.